Um, you first started out in Ponty in, in the 90s. Did you ever believe that you'd get 100 caps for Wales? When you start, you, you, you never... You know, your dream is just to get... Well, I wouldn't say one cap, because when you're a player, you, you don't want to be a one-cap wonder. But, you know, I always had a goal of... Um, I suppose, you know, just to play for Wales a few times, you know, just in one sort of five nations or six nations as it was back then. So, no, to get to 100 was, you know... You know that you never envisaged that because when I was growing up, nobody had got anywhere near that because there weren't as many games as they were. You know when it, when they turned professional. So no, I had uh, I would have been happy growing up if I'd got ten caps. You know um, yeah. to get hundred was yeah, it's, you know pretty proud of that and uh, yeah, just lucky as well. And you retired then in two thousand seven before coming back in two thousand eight. What was the reasons behind initially retiring? I just felt old, pal. I was, you know, I wasn't a spring chicken. I was 32, so um, and the way the professional game is now, it sort of works in cycles with World Cups. And I thought it'd be, a, you know, at 32 years of age. A part of it as well was to extend the sort of club career and keep playing a few more years um, for the club. You know, it's hard bouncing, bouncing back, playing every. You know, I think players are a little bit better looked after now. You know, they play more. You know, they don't have to play for their clubs every week, but you know, it was quite difficult back in the day to juggle both. So you're thinking, like, if uh, retire from international rugby, get a few more years out of club rugby. But um, yeah, that that was the, the, the you know, there was no sort of one of spur of the moment decision. It was always a plan, really, that year going into the World Cup year to think, oh, this will be my last season. And you probably, I think you've been retired now eight years, is it? Twenty, yeah, June twenty twelve. Yeah, so eight, eight, eight years. Um, yeah. I, I, the game has actually changed quite a lot since then. It's, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so, how do you think you'd get on in today's game? Oh, I wouldn't last two minutes. You know, I'm, I'm <laughs> um, having been back involved with um, the squad this year as team manager and just seeing how this evolved. How they, you know, the just, you know. They're all track and field athletes, though. You know, they're you know the way they look after themselves, physically how fit they are, um, just the att- you know the attention to detail from um, you know a coaching point of view to diet to you know training, physical training in the gym. It's just it's, it's off the scale now. It's a different level to when I started. I sort of caught the back end of it probably from between 2008 2012, the back end of my career. I sort of saw that, but even from then, it's it's skyrocketed, you know, the, the these these kids now that's from 15, 16, they're just in gyms, they just know how to look after themselves, how to recover well. And uh yeah, I'm you know, I, I I wouldn't swap my I think my generation, my sort of era in particular, we were very, you know, like sort of myself, Stephen Jones is we were very lucky as we crossed over, we played a little bit of amateur, so we had a bit of fun, but then we tasted the professionalism as well and had the rewards from that. So you know, I, yeah, I just uh, I wouldn't have swapped my time to to any time really. And how is your role as team manager going? Yeah, it's been a bit of a whirlwind couple of months. <laughs> I won't lie to you. Obviously, <laughs> you know, you come into a Six Nations and there was issues with Storm Kira. Yeah. Um, you know, all honestly, so sorts of things behind the scenes which have were going on and then you've had a worldwide pandemic to throw in the mix as well. And the last game, obviously that last sort of week with Scotland week was surreal because you're looking, is the game going to be on? Is it going to be off? No one was quite sure. Nobody knew what was happening, you know, and yeah. so trying to keep, you know, deal with uh, everybody really then, you know, the players obviously could tell they weren't quite, they weren't, they were, mentally they weren't quite there the Scotland week and rightfully yeah. so because um, and then he was called off. So yeah, and then since then it's just been trying to deal with there's all sorts of permutations that might happen with rugby going forward, and so we're just trying to deal with them. So it's been a bit of, a, bit of an eye opener the last yeah. four months. It's all up. It's all downhill from you. <laughs> uh, hopefully, yeah. Hopefully it'll get a lot easier. Um, you said you you see the boys training a lot, and you see the difference in in size of the players as well, and how much they've become athletes. What do you think sort of the biggest difference has been since your playing career that has probably impacted on concussion the most? Well, the concussion one's an interesting one. I don't know. It's really, you know, when I was playing, I, I can't really remember. And I know the game has moved on and medics and science has moved on and things. Mm. I can't really remember players missing games for concussion or having the after effects that players have now. 
you know, we players are still, they'll have a bang on the head on a Saturday, still three weeks later, they're still not feeling well, you know, and I can't ever remember that in my day, if I'm honest. Um, mm. So it's always two weeks, wasn't it? Didn't they always? Yeah, just it's always two weeks. But you know, very rarely would a player say, well, "You know, we'd start training and then not feel right, even yeah. after a concussion." So yeah, it's I don't know what's led to that. It's difficult to say. I think um, obviously, like I said earlier, the, you know, the boys now are physically so much fitter, so much stronger. The game is so much quicker, yeah. um, and you know, to put my I couldn't put my finger on one reason why. I just think the reason probably is that education and we're made more aware of it now by doctors and, you know, back in the day, you took a blow to the head and I would have done it, you know, on, I God knows, I lose count how many times I would have just, you would have just dusted yourself down and carried on. You know, now you've got the, you know, you have a physio um, watching a taped live stream, not watching the game, just looking for any head knocks and nobody's picked up, so they remove the player. Yeah. Um, so I just think it's more... We've made more aware of it now. It was probably going on in the past, but pe people and players would just carry on. Whereas for, you know, rightly now, it's been brought to our attention. So I think there are more concussions being reported. Whereas in the past, you know, you would just dusted yourself down. And honestly, you know, you get a, a bit of smell and salts and carry on. Yeah. Do you remember any um, big concussions you may have suffered? I, I were not big ones. I was never sort of, I can't, well, there were a few, maybe they, they, like so many times, you'd have a bang to the head and you wouldn't know where you were for a, for for a while, and you just carry on. Um, you know that happened. God, like you know, sure. it probably once a game, maybe. I know it's you chuckle about it, but that's where, that's the way it was back then. Um, no, no, you know, I never, from my recollection, I can't ever having you know the ill effects a few days later or a day later or anything. There are certain games where. You know, a bit scarily on a Monday, maybe you'd watch it back and you couldn't really remember a certain thing happening because you probably just had a blow before that. But no, I, I, and I was never sort of, I never left the field concussed or knocked out. Yeah. So no, I, from a personal point of view, yeah, I had, you know, you know, numerous blows to the head and stages in the game where you think, you know, I'm not quite right here, but you just get on with it. Um, but then, like I say, no side effects over the next few days, thankfully. Um Obviously, there's no 100% prevention to concussion. Um, but what measures can be taken to prevent less concussions from happening? You know, I, I don't know many more can. You know, it's a physical sport by nature. It's a contact sport. I think what they're trying to do now, I think, is the right thing. They're trying to low the, the tackle height. Um, so players are more educated now. I think medics are more educated um, just the whole game. Obviously, this has all come from the NFL, um, and obviously the the lawsuits out there. And you know, rugby is a sport which has probably you know been a bit proactive since that last happened, which is a good thing. So I I think they're doing the best they can in many ways. I I can't see how the reason people want to watch rugby is because the physicality is because of the contact. And I think you know you are seeing players now. There are zero risks taken. Absolutely zero risks. You know, they, they, there's if there's any sort of knock on the head, they they remove from the field of play. Anything sort of glance in the head now is you know we've penalised or yellow card or red card. So I think we're on the right track. It's going to take a while to get used to. I know players from back in the day, and you know, would say the game has gone soft, but you know they they need to come and watch the boys train and train with the players now. Yeah. The game hasn't gone spot soft. They just. Just at the end of the day, it is a game, it is a sport, yeah. and we're just trying to make it safer. Well, the biggest sign was when Sam Walton obviously took over your number seven shirt for Wales, and the, the you know, it was a big size difference, wasn't it? Because he's, he's a bit of a gym freak, yeah. Sam, isn't he? and he's six foot, six foot two, or whatever he is. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's you know, I was always small, anyway, as a seven, you know, compared to like you know, internationally. I just think the biggest difference for me is, is the backs, you know, mm -hmm. the back, you know, when I started playing. You, know, you had some, you know, Scott Gibbs, you know, Steve Lewis and stuff upon, you know, physical hard men. But then, you know, you didn't have wingers like George North or centers like Jamie Roberts. Who, and, you know, the backs in the modern game now, they are just as big as the forwards. It's, you know, if when you were younger, if, you know, if you'd go and watch, say, Ponty train in the, I know, early 90s, you could look at a feeler, oh, there's the forwards, they're bigger and there's the backs because they're smaller. 
Now yeah. you look at a field, you turn up the Welsh training, and you had no idea who was who. Mm-hmm. You struggle to differentiate because the backs now were so physical as well, so big. So, yeah. and, and so across the board, that just, you know, I, it, there's been loads of studies and the comparisons between you know, centres in the 70s compared to, I think I would have been a second row in the 70s, I think, you know. <laughs> it's, <laughs> So one in fifteen and a half stone. So it's uh, I think that's the biggest thing. It's just across the board, you know, the back lines as well are so physical. Yeah. And you look at the wingers these days like Naidolo and mm. you know Naira Volo and you know, players like that on the wing. Is it is it sort of sad that rugby's not going that way, but you don't nah. see as many little men in the back line anymore, do you? No, you, you you don't, but you still see, you know, I think, you know, Chelsea and Colby was revelation, yeah. wasn't he, for South Africa in the World Cup. Um, Damien McKenzie for New Zealand as well. They are they are the exception rather than the norm, but I just think that's just, uh, you know, the, the way the game is. And, um, yeah, it's, it's still, I think, it, I do think the game is trying to evolve more. It did get a little bit stale, I would say, four or five years ago, where it was just this sort of yeah. power and, you know, Big men, but no, I just think the rules are changing. They're trying to change the rules so it, you know, it does bring you know, more feet to foot back in. So, yeah, I just think it's you know people have got, I've got. I think people forget sometimes the game is so young in professionalism. You know, we're still trying to find a way. I think you know football has been professional for like a hundred years, isn't it? Hundred plus years. You know, rugby was it twenty years, twenty five years. Yeah. So, you know, everything. Rugby is just trying to find itself in a profession. It's, it's not really a game that was built for professionalism. Yeah. Uh, so it was amateur ethos and everything. So I just think, you know, those sorts of, you know, the sort of smaller men, and, and it was a game for every size, wasn't it? You know, you'd have your big props here. But no, you, you've got to be an athlete. You know, if you're not an athlete, you, you can't play the modern game. And, it's, you know, that's just the way it is because of, it, because of the professionalism. It was funny because I was watching our uh, Wales Grand Slam game from Tom Five the other day on yeah. BBC, and you had Anthony Foley going for the, going for the line, didn't you, in the corner, and Shane Williams. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like it. It's a size difference is, yeah, and you know, I just think you know you those smaller men. I think if you you know sometimes like Shane, for instance, I I I don't know he won't mind me saying this, but I think he was so small it helped him, and Charlton yeah. Colby's the same because they're so. You've got no no way to aim to hit those guys. They're so yeah. small. If they were a little bit taller, probably wouldn't have survived. So the fact yeah. they were so small actually, you know, benefited them with the, when they had the ball in hand. So, and I, you know, if you look at the coaching perspective as well. You know, when I started, you had you, know, you probably had two coaches. Um, you know, you'd have a forwards coach and a backs coach, and one of those would double up as a head coach. Whereas now, you know, you have a you have a head coach, you have a forwards coach, a backs coach, a kicking coach. Defence coach, you know, uh, um, I will be now for Wales. He's a contact area coach. You know, you have seven. You know, you have three or four conditioners, four analysis. It's just behind the scenes. It's just you know gone to another yeah. level. It's like Man City's backroom staff, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, you know, Wales. I think we've got some like twenty-five backroom staff. Yeah. Um, from masseurs to medics, but you know, you're sitting down and you're thinking. Who could you do without? But you, in the modern game, you can't. That's just you know it, it is where it is. It's all that you know one percenters and attention to detail, and yeah. you know it's just the way the modern game. And obviously, you said you were in and around Welsh training. Is it on the coaches' minds? Is it on Wayne Pivak's minds, especially after the World Cup with so many red cards in the group stages? Is the tackling technique uh, involved in the training now? Due to That's the mass- it's massive. It's um... You know, it's particularly like Byron Hayward from a defence coach, and uh, O'Shawn before him as well. It, yes, Matt, you just can't afford to to go anywhere near the head now. You know, some of the, some it is difficult because it's easy for everybody to say when the game is slowed down in slow motion, or why has he done that? But it's some things the game happens so quick. Sometimes you might be in an Oculus blow to the head, but yeah, definitely in training. You know, all the drills are sort of designed so the tackle area is brought down. Um, below chest height, really. You know, yeah. it used to be, you know, I can remember 2008 when Shaw came in, we had this big, big emphasis on one low, one high to stop the offload. Mm. It's very difficult to do that now because you go anywhere, anywhere near there and a player moves. Yeah. Um, you know, you're going to catch him in the head, yellow card, red card, penalty, lose the game. So, yeah, it's definitely on all coaches' minds, particularly 
you know, from a defensive point of view, defensive coaches, the game has over the last sort of two, three years, you know, you've really got to work hard on dropping that body height. And then you mentioned they you worked with Sean Edwards. Uh, I, I put a survey out about concussion and how, you know, what can prevent it. And a lot of people actually said less rugby league coaches. <laughs> so, you know, what was your experience like with Sean, you know? Oh, Sean was brilliant. Absolutely. You know, technically, as a defence coach, I wish, I know I always said this, I wish I'd met Sean when I was 22, not 32. I would have been a far, far better player. He was, yeah. um, his attention to detail and, you know, little nuggets of information used to have going into certain games. Um, you know, a brilliant world class is record speaks for itself. So, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that with the less rugby league coaches. They, you know, it's all about technical technique. And I just think if you look at, you know, a lot of the concussions, very, very, not, you know, but very few concussions are from actual. You know, a lot of it is the ball carrier and his height as well, you know, and, yeah. and the tackler actually with, his, with a bad technique, just going upright rather than dipping. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I think from Sean Edwards' point of view, you know, it was drilled really, really hard into the players about the technical technique, you know, and just, uh, like you say, initially when he came in, you could, you could go a little bit higher. Mm. To, and that was always to stop the contact, uh, stop the offload, sorry, not to ever make contact with anyone's head. But then, you know, now... I know, you know, they've been working so hard on dropping that body height in the tackle. Yeah, and, and on the law changes, were you involved in any law changes when you were a player, you know, that maybe... No. No, no, no nothing like that. Um, not that, no, I, I think there is more of a sort... I don't think, it, you know, there's more of a sort of player input now than I think there used to be. Yeah. Um, because I think people, you know, the, the, maybe the powers to be, a lot of them never played professional rugby. We were all from the amateur era, and like I say, the game has changed so much. So I think they are realizing now oh, we need input from sort of ex players. And you know, I think McCausey, he slips, these boys are on sort of panels to discuss that. So, but no, I was never involved in anything like that. And finally, let's say you're the, the head of world rugby, what, what law would you change that would benefit the tackler and maybe prevent more concussions from happening? Oh. Do you know, like I said earlier, I, I can't see a lot more they can change, if I'm honest with you. I think it's, you know, they definitely anything below, you know, the shoulder area. I think they, they're coming down hard on on anybody who does make contact with the head. Like we say, it's red card, yellow card, penalty, without doubt now, any sort of. So for me, I, th I think they are going in the right direction. I don't think there is, <laughs> there is much more they could do because it's the nature of the game. It's a contact game. And I think... You know, the biggest thing we need to do, and they are doing it, and slowly and surely it's, it's getting there. And I think the generation coming through now are more, it's just the education on it all. You know, yeah. I know from a medical point of view, you know, it's drilled home by our doctors, by the physios to all players that, you know, you have any sort of knock to the head, you're coming off, that's it. You know, whereas back in the day, in fairness, you would, a bit scary, but this is how we work, you would tell the medic that you're not coming off. You know, I'm staying on and they would sort of, because they were uneducated as well, you know, as much as on how severe concussion it was and what it can do. So, yeah, I just think they're doing, they're doing as much as they can. There's no one specific thing I can think of that they're not doing or they're not trying to input, um, enforce that could change it too much.